Oh, this is quite a cool interview. Um, a little feature here with um this DJ called Monster on Resident Advisor, which I wanted to quickly talk about. Obviously, I'm sure most of my listeners or viewers are familiar with the Resident Advisor mix series that he put out. Um, I'm not sure if it's a, even a, they have a date with it, if it's a bi-weekly or week or monthly thing, but they're churning them out, you know, all the time. They're up to 715 now. It's insane. There is an, there is this idea that I have, what, uh, which I've had for a while, actually, to kind of do my own sort of mix series like this, but to kind of continue it week on a weekly basis, maybe twice a week. I don't know what the a good ratio is to upload DJ mixes. Is it two week? Is it twice a week, once a week? I guess it would be twice or maybe once. So you could keep... So there was an idea that you were buying or downloading fresh records in a week and then kind of showcasing them in the mix, right? And that's not including your um, rec- recordings of your DJ sets playing live, right? I would imagine, right? That would be a good way to do it. Like every week you kind of buy them tracks and you play them out. Um, that's what most people would do, right? Especially if you're doing it on the side as a hobby. You work Monday to Friday. Um, you might pick up some tunes here and there while you're on your computer at work. Get back, get home on a Saturday morning, open, crack open a beer and play some tunes in your house. And I think that would be a good way to do it. But anyway, back to the interview. Um, RA715 um, featuring Monster. Again, I'm not that familiar with this um, young lady at all. I think her DJ name is pretty cool, Monster. Um, it says here, the Oramix member leans into her dark side. And as I usually always skip the interviews, but lately I've been reading a lot of them, the RA ones with the mix series. I usually kind of get my interview... Uh, content from RA on the Resident Advisor Exchange side of things. I usually kind of miss out on the written interviews, but they're really thought-provoking and they're really interesting because you get to a kind of glimpse of what it must be like to be like a a professional, uh, high-flying, you know, jet-setting kind of DJ and also kind of get an idea behind what goes into some people's mixes. Some of the time it's just, you know, it's just the DJ saying, hey, I wanted to show you guys what I'm usually playing out when I'm in a club in case you don't hear me in your local town. Or it's sometimes a chance for them to kind of, you know, um, talk about uh, stuff that's concerning outside of music, maybe to espouse some sort of political opinion, or if your mum is shake, you know, accuse the industry of being misogynistic, even though, you know, you're getting booked by the same people. Anyway, let's continue. But this monster had a really good point when it comes to, um, what would I see here? There's a very cool, interesting interview bit that she said here that I thought was very interesting. That I think is regarding the conservative attitudes that exist in Poland, her native country, I'm assuming, right? Da, 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 da. Um, so here's here's a question bit, yeah, on this. So it says this from R8. So it's the following. Let me zoom in here a little bit and get this up on the screen. Is it up on there? Yes, it is. Okay, so it says here Poland's current administration has been characterized by anti gay propaganda, with things coming to more visible head following by your Biliastok pride. How is the queer music scene in Poland responding to the country's political environment? And Monster replies, What you need to understand about Poland is that there's currently a huge divide between the largest Polish cities and the smaller towns, usually in a worse economic situation with less access to good education. And while there are pride marches attended by thousands of people in Warsaw, Poznan where I live, and Krakow, and Groklo, and Gdansk, there are a lot of uh, places where the conversation about LGBTQIA plus rights has just started. Those are the towns where we've been seeing trouble, uh, troubling reactions to the pride marches. Some of them have declared themselves LGBTQ plus free zones, which is insane. And the government propaganda is only making it worse. What I liked about this answer, I think, from my end, is that I think if you're like a... Um, Imagine you're like a dance music aficionado, you know, electricity music fan, you're a pra- you're you're a, you're a contributor to the scene, you go and attend festivals, you then go and create your own label, become a DJ, put you know, uh, create a little collective, do your own thing, you're in part of it, right? There is this understanding or maybe an assumption that you've probably gone around the world, right? You've probably travelled around Europe, gone to other places, and it's kind of informed where you see the scene, right? So it would be really easy for someone like her, in Monster's case, to kind of be a little bit uh, bitter, to be a little bit angry, upset, frustrated, and just kind of, you know, act out when it comes to the LGBTQ plus scene in Poland, as opposed to it, where it might have been any other place that she might have traveled to, whether it's Berlin, Amsterdam, London, Paris, Madrid, Barcelona, right? She goes to all these other places and it's, prob- and it's fine, right? She's like in heaven. It's like this um, utopia that she's living in, or that she's that she's kind of temporarily visiting. And then you go back to your hometown, and you're like, bloody hell, my home country, and it's like super backwards. But to have this kind of compassion in this sentence, which I really thought was understanding, quite telling, 
this idea that the largest cities in Poland are pretty cool, but it's the smaller ones with worse economic situation and have less access to education. So as much as it could be just the idea that, you know, that part of the region, that part of the country or that part of the world is just, you know, they're going to be conservative until the day they die. It is what it is. I think there are some places in the world that are like that. I don't think any amount of uh, social awareness will change it. Some of the things, it's just one of those things, right? It's, it's like that kind of, what was that tribe in an island that, you know, doesn't welcome any foreigners anymore after that one guy went and fucked up for everyone, right? They just kill anyone on site. There's that kind of, there's those places that you're not going to educate them out of their stance, right? They might have just they might just have to be phased out over time, um, you know. In terms of the the other generations might come up and they might become more more understanding, more quote unquote westernized. But for the most part, you're not going to change those people on that remote island, right? Their point of view has kind of been long ingrained as part of their DNA, part of their identity. Same with probably this, you know how they view um, same sex marriage in these kind of uh, far flung places in Eastern or Eastern Central Europe, wherever you refer to Poland. But I do like this. I do. Uh, I do kind of have sympathy and really uh, kind of sympathize with this idea that you know, in a smaller town where there's not much access to education or you're suffering economically, to have all these quote unquote queers come into your city or your little town for an amazing party in a great little venue, having the time of their life, carefree. I guess it would kind of leave you a bit embittered. And if you're someone like Monster, you could probably you could probably have sympathy with the reason why they're so angry. Isn't that? they're angry with you or your way of life or who you choose to sleep with they're just angry at the fact that you are living so free and they are still constrained or restricted by the limits i've been placed on that i have nothing to do with them right when a government fails its people um usually the most downtrodden are the ones affected in it and they have no right they have no say in what happens next they have no right even they have no right in kind of fighting their position in the first place right they're just there you know, left to the woods, left to the wolf, sorry, and kind of left to kind of fend for themselves, really, for the most part. So I really like the fact that she kind of had this level of compassion, really, in terms of the situation, and didn't see it as like a, no, we have to go into these small towns in Poland and show them that it's all good and they're wrong and they're bigger. It's like, no, 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 we understand that it's a far bigger issue outside of our need to kind of rave in dark places, right? Um, but also using that kind of, need to rave in dark places which is quite surface and whatever using it as a kind of trojan horse to kind of you know talk about some really really important topics um again it continues here uh we've been hearing groundbreaking stories about the spike in quiz you've suicide rates which is horrible to hear which is a non-issue which is non-issue for the current government and while the queer scene is organizing against the, the government's outrageous policies we're still mostly based in bigger cities Oramic's Total Solidarity VA compilation has raised thousands of euros which are supposed to help the queer communities in small towns. As Oramics, we've uh, been trying to get funds to organize workshops in those places and one of our main goals is education. And if we could strengthen the queer scene in small towns in any way, that would really help. That is amazing, right? That is amazing to hear. This idea they're not going in there with like a sledgehammer and trying to tear down all these old institutions. Instead, they're trying to educate right they're trying to just bring awareness to the fact that look we do exist we are your fellow countrymen country women right um we should be living harmoniously amongst each other and the only way to do it is for somebody to kind of have the sense of humility to kind of bring themselves down to quote unquote their level in order to enact some kind of change i just don't know man like the rest of the interview is really cool i recommend you check it out but i thought it was really interesting to see like the difference between her politically motivated uh interview and mix series and just the fact that you know she stands for more than just you know getting high and going out and also the difference between this interview and what mama shake had to say which is mama shake or mama snake whatever her name is who was in my opinion probably the reason why they ended up closing the comments on ra right one of the best bits about ra was the comments right you get you got to see exactly what not to what was the right decision and what was the wrong opinion when you read the comments right because most of the writing on ra is brilliant anyway but you saw the difference in approach, right? One side, I don't know, that Mama Shake woman was just like, you know, I don't know what was what her what her what 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 B was in her bonnet. And then you get to see this woman who kind of, you know, lives to talk, walks a walk, walks a walk, lives to walks a walk, talks to talk, talks talk, walks a walk, whatever that term is. And um yeah, he's doing it in a really good way. And um I don't know, man. Just a, it's a super inspiring story. I think it's really, really cool. Because again, it's probably a thankless task. It's probably something that hasn't really won her any friends or you know, um, sympathy even within some of the more conservative places in Poland. But again, someone that hasn't, you know, she's not run away from her, her home country. 
she's not going to you know set up a studio somewhere you know a satellite studio in Berlin somewhere and just kind of ranted the raving on the internet she's actually there on the ground um really trying to prevent um, youth suicide rate spiking again which is a horrible side effect of those kind of things in it but yeah do recommend you check it out really cool mix um and a great interview from monster on ra9